I'm Terry Gilbert. I am the creator of Learn to Speak with Confidence. I help busy professionals, entrepreneurs, and people with a message learn how to be more confident, less anxious, and also how to connect to their audience. Because a lot of people communicate, but they don't connect. Now, whether you have an audience of 500, or just an audience in your boardroom, or maybe you just have an audience of a one-on-one, -on -one, these classes are for you. These classes will help you catapult your life to the next level, whether it's professional, personal, or spiritual. Do you ever feel anxious when you have to speak in the public? I know I did, whether it was one person or 500. Actually, one's not as bad as the 500, but anxiety would just overtake me. I would get butterflies. I would get sick at my stomach. I just felt so anxious. But it's no secret that 75% of adult people are fearful of speaking. The 2013 National Mental Health Survey showed that 75% of men and 73% of women, adult women and adult men, are fearful of speaking. It's the number one pho phobia. Like I said, it's no secret. It's the number one phobia over dying, over spiders and over heights. So what does that mean? That just means that people would rather die than to speak publicly. Now that's, that is just ridiculous because adults People are being robbed. We're being robbed of living a rich life out of fear. So I just encourage you, do not let fear rob you of your success in your home, your workplace, and in your spiritual, spiritual world. Do not let fear rob you of that. Now, knowing that this phobia of public speaking, that that's the number one phobia, what is that, how does that make you feel? If you're in that same category, it should make you feel better because that lets you know, I'm not an oddball. I'm not the only one that's scared of this. Most people are. I've worked with 55 year old men that are scared to, to go in and give a sales presentation. Or even a mom that says, oh, the Lord's giving me a message and I really wanna start you know, talking about maybe trafficking hope or, or unwed mothers or whatever that call is on their life. But they've never ever spoken before. Well, these classes are for you. These classes will help you do what it took me 10 years to learn. I've condensed those 10 years into five week se sessions. Now, it's important that you do these sessions in order, and some of them are a little dry, teachy, but don't not proceed on to the next one. Number two and number four are the most exciting ones, but you have to have some foundational work, so it's just one builds on the next one. So I encourage you um, to move through these in a slow pace so that you can take the time and you can apply. I say maybe once a week would be the quickest, one session a week, so that you can learn the information and apply the information. And don't get overwhelmed because it's a lot of information. If you can only apply one or two of the techniques and methods, these things are going to increase your relationships, your sales, your production. They're going to increase your confidence overall. I realized that I needed to grow my business and that I, I wanted my life to move forward. I just knew there was more. I wanted an increase on in my business. I wanted. Um, I was at the time looking to create some teaching classes, and but I needed to be planted in a place where they would flourish. So I had two weeks off. My son was with his father, so I decided, you know what? I'm going to be adventurous. Now this was very adventurous for me because I'm not one to do this. I like a plan. But I bought a one-way ticket to Austin, Texas. And not knowing where I would stay, no hotel room, where I was going next, or really when I would come home. I got on that plane, and here I was, I was sitting in my seat, a little bit nervous about what I was doing, a little bit like, okay, what if I can't find a hotel, you know, just letting that one voice kind of start talking to me. And all of a sudden, I visited with a lady across the aisle, and she said, I said, what is it you do? And she said, oh, I, I live in Austin, Texas, and I'm a travel agent. And I was like, oh my goodness! How, what are the odds? What are the odds of that? I mean, at that moment, I thought, this is a God moment. This woman right here 
is a godsend to me, like my personal assistant or something. And so she just reaches in her bag and she pulls out this beautiful brochure of Austin, Texas. And I'm like, for real? Are you kidding me? And she starts to tell me, this is what you need to see. You've got to see the bats under the bridge. Oh my gosh. And you have to go to 6th Street. I, this is a hotel you should stay at. Oh, and don't, don't even bother with this part of town. Oh my goodness. This is the place you need to eat. So she just carefully maps out my trip. It tells me where the new subdivisions were, what houses I need to see, who the good builders were. I mean, she was just a wealth of knowledge right there next to me, just the opportune divine appointment. So I folded up my information and I thanked her and I was just so excited as the plane landed. And I did. The next day, I woke up and I followed her itinerary to a T. I went to see the bats under the bridge. Then I went to see these homes and it was exciting. I'm like, these are some great homes. This is something, this is where I could see myself. It was just, everything was like in the, going in the right path. I mean, have you ever had that happen where you're like, okay, this path feels right. And I proceeded to spend the day looking at the, the housing market and um, eating at the nice restaurant she had recommended. And then I filmed myself that night on 6th Street. Now, I don't know if you know what 6th Street is, I didn't at the time, but what 6th Street is, is is a place where musicians get discovered. Some of the finest musicians that you listen to today started there. So I filmed myself at this quaint little cafe. It was so awesome. I was sitting in the very back and it was, it was an outdoor cafe. And so there was dim lights in the afternoon and the sun was going down. It was dim lights and it was cool and breezy, and I remember sitting there and listening to that sweet music and just thinking, oh, this is delightful. And I looked up at the man playing on the stage, and I thought, I wonder who's been discovered on that stage? And then I thought, who sat in this chair and discovered that person? And as I just kind of meditated on that and I just was listening to the music, it just occurred to me, what if I discover something sitting in this chair? And about that time, two gentlemen walked up and said, excuse me, can we join you? Now I would never let my, I would never give my daughter this, I would say, no, 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 mm -mm. But of course, gentlemen, that was the key here. So I said, absolutely, I would love for you to join me in. We proceeded to share information about our lives and they had been living there and they told me about the town and one man was telling me about he had, how he had grown his business and I told him what my you know, desires were, what my dreams were and I said, I really want to create some teaching DVDs at the time, some DVDs that um, will encourage people and it was in interiors. I, I spent a lot of years building homes and doing interiors and I said, I want to teach people what I know. And so he said, well, <laughs> have you ever done that? I mean, have you ever spoken, you know, to, to the masses? And I'm like, well, no, but I know the information. He said, well, that's a good one component. And he said, you know, I learned to become a better communicator and a better speaker through Toastmasters. So I said, what is that? Like, is that like a drinking club? You lift your glass and make a toast. I mean, what, what is that? Because um, I don't think that's really for me. And he said, no, 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 it's a club where you learn to speak. And I thought, hmm, okay, well, maybe that sounds good. And so he immediately got on his phone and he found the address of the one in my hometown. So he emails it to me so that I would have it when I got home. I would have this email that would be on my phone of exactly where I was supposed to go. So what was interesting is the very next day I woke up and I found myself desiring to come back home. I just said, pull to come back home and get back to business. It's like I found what I went looking for. Now in retrospect, that is where Learn to Speak with Confidence started. I did not know that at the time. You know, this is, this is looking back. So much of our life, we look back and we see, but at the time, we're not aware of it. So I got on the plane, flew home, and just days later, it was time to go to that meeting. And I was just overtaken with fear. Do you remember in grade school how the teacher, I had a teacher, her name was Miss Mack, and she would just belt out a question and then she would just immediately say, Terry, can you tell me the answer? And I would, so I was so fearful of being called on 
uh, by the teacher and not knowing the answer. And then the class looking at me and going, oh, she's so stupid and laughing. And y'all remember that? I would, that I would find myself just hiding my head behind the person in front of me like, please, please don't call my name. Go pass me up, pass me up. And your heart just racing. That was it. That was how I felt. I was so scared of somebody seeing me mess up that I could not go to that meeting. Now, that almost kind of shocked me to be that fearful, to be that overtaken with fear. But remember, the number one phobia is public speaking. Well, I'm, I was in the 75 percentile. So, what I decided to do is find one in another town. And so I drove all the way to a meeting an hour and a half away. Now, I wouldn't, I'm not proud of that, and I didn't share that at the time, but looking back, it's just part of the process, okay? So that's why these classes are good for you. You can do this in the privacy on your, of your own home and, and start learning these skills so that you can build a little confidence and then go take them out there into the world. So I drove to the meeting an hour and a half away, had a two-hour meeting, and then drove an hour and a half back. On the way home, I thought to myself, this is ridiculous to spend over five hours of time to go to a meeting that's right in my hometown. And so I decided at that moment, I decided that I was going to be courageous enough to go to that meeting no matter if I saw somebody I knew, no matter if I made a fool out of myself, no matter what happened, that I was going to tackle the thing that I feared. Because when you tackle what you're afraid of, confidence comes. There's a process of doing what you're afraid of and the confidence comes. And public speaking is a skill and it's, if, it's for everyone. We must all need effective communication. We all need to be able to communicate well and it's available to everyone. And that, that is what I learned by taking these classes. But then shortly after these classes, then I started to increase that over the next 10 to 12 years. I would read book upon book, seminar after seminar. I would practice after I finished one series, then I went to series number two. Then I took Dale Carnegie courses. And then I just recently got certified as a coach and speaker for the John Maxwell team. So all these things that I've collected and gleaned from all the masters of all areas, that's what these classes are built on. I've gleaned from the best of the best and I've deposited the things that work into five series and that is what I'm depositing into you and that's what can be life changing to you if you will apply these apply these to your life. So I'm excited about you taking these classes. I'm excited about your life changing and you becoming a better person and living a better life. So what does this mean for you? What specifically, being more successful, living a better life, what does that look like? Well, it looks like different things for different people. If you're a salesman, it's going to increase your money. It's going to increase your sales. If you're a stay-at-home mom and you just have meetings, maybe with you have teas or luncheons you go to or meet with the room moms or with your school child's teacher, it's going to increase that. It's going to increase your relationship with your spouse and with your children. This is very relational. God made us relational. You know, after all these classes or towards the end of all this, I went back and worked on my master's and I took a lot of class or classes working on a, towards a master's in pastoral counseling. And the one thing that stands out is that people are built to be relational. God made us. He made us to connect and be relational. Everything happens with inside of a relationship. If you know somebody, they know somebody. If you're making a sale, you talk to a person. Even though we're in the text age and people's communication is watered down, that is even more the reason to hone and refine your skills because it gives you another level above the texture. So even though we're going to emails and texting, the, the art of communicating, the art of speaking, the art of relationship is still imperative that you have it because that is how we're made. That's how we're designed. That's a basic need of a human being. So when you get better with that, when you connect 
your life is going to increase. So it can be money, it can be relationships, it can be time management, it can be fulfillment because you're able to tell them, talk and tell a message that's been laid upon your heart. It could look like a lot of things, but what it looks like is a richer life. That's what it looks like, a richer life. So don't let fear rob you of your best life.